Hello, I'm Anna Sell for Beneath the Surface with Scott Gibson. Scott sat down with Peter Spina of goldseek.com. They discussed his outlook on gold and silver for 2012. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Scott Gibson with Kitco Gibson Capital. I'm here with Peter Spina of goldseek.com. Welcome, Peter. Hi, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for being with us. I wanted to ask you, uh, you're an expert and have been since founding GoldSeek back in 1995, an expert on analyzing gold and silver and the various different gold and silver stocks. What's your take on gold and silver going forward in 2012? Well, we start the year off on a positive note. Uh, we have a continuation of the prior years, which is in increasing uh, bank problems around the world, growing debt issues, low interest rates, very positive for gold and silver. So I believe 2012 will continue. It's uh, last several years, the trend will continue and we'll see gold and silver um, move higher. Whether that happens in the start of the year, later in the year, it's, it's a bit of a difficult short-term question at, the, at this moment, but uh, the overall fundamentals are very positive. And how do you see that playing out for the stocks, both gold and silver stocks? Well, the gold and silver stocks actually had a pretty sideways year last year, despite gold moving higher again for another uh, another record year. And uh, from the last two, three years, mining stocks have underperformed quite significantly. So the valuations are quite compelling. There are some really good val uh, uh, value plays out there, and uh, especially in the mining companies and well, all across the board, uh, exploration development and, and, and actual miners. So uh, it seems like an excellent time to be accumulating these companies. They're, they're really at a depressed level um, relative to the metal prices. So any, uh, even if the markets were to stabilize around these prices, if silver around $30 and gold around these prices, you're seeing a lot of improvements in the mining companies that the miners are seeing huge uh, cash flows into the company. Dividends are being increased. Their balance sheets are looking better. So uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of positive things happening with these companies, and I think that'll attract more investors. Well, and we're here in Vancouver at the Cambridge House Resource Investment Conference. Great conference with 500 to 600 companies exhibiting, over 10,000 attendees. Um, a lot of companies here that sort of fall into that category of their stocks have been beaten down. What's your take on maybe some of the companies that you like, either the ones that are here or the ones that you've been following? Well, there, this is an excellent show. There seems to be a very positive uh, from the investor side, a lot of positive outlook in the year ahead. Um, all across the board, you know, these exploration companies had a really difficult year. So the miners held up over the last year, but the exploration companies especially have seen their prices cut down. There are some companies trading for five, ten dollars a resource ounce for good ounces in the ground. So uh, there's a combination of things that I look for in a good company: uh, share structure, management being very key. Um, the asset, the stage at which development is taking place, and then you got to incorporate other factors. You know, the market situation, metal prices, which are all very good at the moment, and uh, how do the companies plan to proceed in developing these assets? So, uh, there's a lot of factors to consider and, and a lot of op options to choose from. So, it's a long process of going through and meeting with a lot of different companies and comparing and, and finding which ones really st stand out. Mm -hmm. Well, I do see you talking to a lot of companies and doing your work, doing all the legwork to try and find good quality companies to be involved in. Do you care to mention to our audience uh, one or two companies you might legwork in right now? Sure. Um, in the mining side, uh, on both gold and silver, I think a lot of the mid-tiers are really excellent opportunities in junior producers. On the junior producer side, you have Silvercrest Mines that's uh, really improving their balance sheets and expanding and, and doing a lot of great work there. Um, they are, uh, I own the, that company by the way, and they are a sponsor on the site. I own that one as well. Disclosure. Yeah. Um, on advanced exploration, there's a company in uh, Colombia that's about to come out with their first ever 43 one one called Batero Gold, which you may know about. Yeah, I own that one as well too. Okay. Yeah. And uh, same same disclosure there uh, for myself, but they, uh, they're coming out with probably five to 10 million ounce range, uh, first initial resource. and. This is a huge asset, uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to that um, update in the near future. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, there's there's quite a few companies I, I can mention, but those are some of the top ones. Uh. Well, and people can find your, your comments at uh, goldseek and silverseek.com. So thank you very much for being with us, Peter. Thank you, Scott. Again, that's Peter Spina of goldseek and silverseek.com. My name is Scott Gibson with Beneath the Surface. Thank you for watching Beneath the Surface with Scott Gibson. Stay tuned for more interviews from the PDAC.